Hi again, and welcome to the next video of the fourth section, Modeling the Data Structure. In the previous video, we have learned about structuring our program. In this video, we will learn about the naming convention chess pieces and naming locations on the chessboard. Coming back to the old adage, data structures, not algorithms, are central to writing good programs. Therefore, it is important that we spend some time defining the data structure. The key data that the model needs to record is the position of the chess pieces on the chessboard. Accordingly, we first need a way to define these locations and a unique way to identify the chess pieces. Let's first agree to the naming conventions that we will stick to in the program. Convention on Naming Chess Pieces Every chess piece is identified by a single letter. Pawn equals P. Knight equals N. Yes, knight with N. Bishop equals B. Rook equals R, Queen equals Q, and King equals K. The white chess pieces are represented by uppercase letters, and the black chess pieces are represented by lowercase letters. Convention for Naming Locations on the Chessboard In order to assign unique identifiers to every square on the chessboard, we will mark the squares along the x-axis by using the letters A to H. We will mark the y-axis by using the numbers 1 to 8, respectively. Accordingly, the squares on the chessboard will be identified like this. Thus, A1 denotes the leftmost square at the bottom of the chessboard. Currently, it is occupied by a white rook. The C3 position is currently empty. E8 has a black king, and A8 has a black rook. Let's add this to the configurations.py file. Now, if you want to represent the chessboard at any point of time, all you need is a mapping of the location to the chess piece at that location. Looks like a perfect candidate for storing as a Python dictionary. Thus, the initial position of all the chess pieces on the chessboard could be represented here. We need this data to get started, so let's add this as a constant to the configurations.py file. Now, let's move on to code the model class for our program. We've already decided that we will use a Python dictionary to store the position of chess pieces on the chessboard. We can go ahead and add a dictionary attribute to the class. However, we will take a slightly different approach. Let's make model a child class of the built-in dictionary class. Thus, the self variable that refers to the current class object instance will also have all the properties and methods that are available to the dictionary. All the methods that are available to the standard dictionary class can now be called on the model object self. So now, we can define a method which returns the short name of the chess piece at that position when it's given a position on the chessboard. If there is no chess piece at the position, this traps out rather than giving a key error exception. Next, let's add some important attributes to the model class. The half move clock keeps a track of the number of turns played since the last pawn's advance or the last capture. This is used to determine whether a draw can be claimed under the 50 move rule. The full move number is a count that is incremented by one after every move of a black piece. This is used to track the overall length of a game. Finally, let us add another method that given the row column tuple for a square returns its alphanumeric position. For example, an input of 1, 2 returns B3. Next, let's define an associated helper method to ensure that we only process mouse clicks that occur on the canvas widget and not anywhere else on the root window. There is not much that can be added to the model class for now until we lay down the code logic to handle the chess pieces. We can define the rules for all the chess pieces within the model class, but that would make the model class too bulky. Therefore, let's define the chess piece related logic in a new file named piece.py. Since this is inherently a part of the model class, but it is defined in a new file, let's add a reference to the model class within this file. Let's do this next. Awesome! In this video, we have successfully learned about modeling the data structures. In the next video, we'll see how to create a piece class.